Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a stealth survival shelter called the Ranger Grave, a modified fighting position shelter that we can use in the field to maintain a low silhouette. We need to get our measurements first and then locate a good piece of terrain that offers cover and concealment and can accommodate our shelter build. This shelter we're going to build today is a modification on a two-man fighting position shelter taught to infantrymen to increase their survivability on the battlefield by giving them a low-profile shelter to sleep in and then fight from out in the jungle against the enemy. This type of shelter is great for survivability on the battlefield, but it's also great for stealth camping or creating just a low-profile shelter to remain undetected or bring as little attention as possible to ourselves if we're out in the woods and we want to remain stealthy while we're camping. Using a little bit of terrain analysis, we picked a good position where we can avoid detection because we're on the high ground, we're going to have a low profile shelter, and then we can see anybody coming up from the low ground along these avenues of approach so we can remain stealthy in our camp. We created an outline and then swept away the debris on the forest floor. We're going to keep that debris because we're going to use it later on to help camouflage our shelter. Now we're going to get ready to dig and we're going to lay out our poncho to pile up dirt. Two smaller advantages to point out really quick. The top of the hill that we're on is gently sloping toward the foot of our shelter, which means our feet are actually gonna be naturally lower than our head in our shelter, which is what we want, which means we can remove less dirt, saving us time and energy on the shelter. Plus, at the head end of our shelter, there are two little knolls to the left and right, and we are right in between those, giving us added cover and concealment, so our shelter actually appears lower than it actually is from looking a distance away. One drawback about this type of shelter is that it is a lot of work digging and moving dirt. So as part of our shelter strategy, we need to be proximate to water with a good kit so we can treat that water and stay hydrated as we build. One really good technique is to take out a spare poncho or tarp, lay it on the ground as a ground cloth, and then pile up all the dirt we're going to remove from our shelter on that poncho so we can keep the area clean. You'll notice I'm digging while standing in the shelter. I'm not standing outside the shelter dragging dirt everywhere. We work from within the shelter and pile everything onto the poncho to keep the site clean. Take note that we are starting at the head of our shelter with a ground cloth at the rear of the shelter to collect the dirt. This is for a purpose so we can actually work further down into the earth as we dig but also so we can drag the earth back behind our shelter and not in front of our shelter to give our location away. That extra poncho or ground tarp makes things a lot easier because now we can actually move that dirt. We started about halfway up our shelter with the ground cloth, removed the first half of the top layer of earth, piled it on the poncho, and now all we have to do is grab the corners in the center of the poncho and simply pull back a little bit so we can get to the rest of the shelter location and then continue digging. This is a very easy technique, low effort, low work. And once we're done, we're gonna drag that poncho full of dirt back behind us. All right, it's just continuous work and nonstop sweating until we reach the foot end of our shelter. Another reason that we chop up the earth with our entrenching tool into little tiny squares is so we can stack them on our poncho, but the soil here will maintain its shape for a short period of time while we're using our stealth shelter. So once we can seal that dirt, we can bring it back after a period of time, replace those blocks easily to make it easier for us to sanitize and sterilize this site. All right, USGI military issue poncho, opportunity for glory. If this poncho can hold me up in a hammock configuration, it should be able to take all this dirt. I'm estimating this is about 250 pounds of dirt that we're gonna have in this poncho. Easy method is just connect opposite corners with one another, tie them in an overhand knot, and then prep that dirt to move. We're gonna drag it behind us so nobody sees it in front of our shelter. All those sprint drag carries are starting to pay off right here. The whole purpose of the sprint drag carry on the Army Combat Fitness Test is so we can drag 250 pounds of dirt from our stealth survival shelter about 10 meters behind us into the low ground to conceal it. With our poncho full of dirt concealed behind our position, we can head back to the dig site. We want to dig down into the earth further at the foot end of our shelter and leave 
more dirt at the head end. So we're just naturally laying with our head elevated comfortably so we can observe out in front of our survival stealth shelter. Because of the terrain to the left and right hand side of our shelter position, we are going to remove less dirt and still have the same effect of being low in the ground. With our shallow dug-in position and the high ground to the left and right of our shelter, overhead cover is what's going to give us the illusion that our stealth survival shelter is just part of the Earth's surface. We could use natural materials from the area if we wanted to, but that would obviously leave sign of our presence in the area. So it's better for us to bring those things that are hardest to recreate with us for our shelter. We're going to use a little bit of bushcraft to complete the overhead cover portion of our shelter with our paracord, camp stakes, and then our poncho and those bipod legs that we shear lash together, we can create just a bipod A-frame using our paracord as the ridge line for itself to complete the shelter and stand it up above our dig site so we can actually get into our shelter and remain undetected. Whenever we construct a survival shelter, always remember the BLISS acronym. B, blended, we want to blend into the environment. L, low, we want to maintain a low shelter. I, irregular, for irregular shape. The first S is for small, keep it small. And then the last S is secluded. Keep it in a secluded area so we remain undetected. The bipod A-frame shelter really is just a simple technique that we can use in bushcraft or survival training or for low profile shelters like this because with those bipod legs, we have the ability to raise or lower the entrance of our shelter to wherever we need it to. So if our shelter is a little bit too high, we extend the legs and bring it down or push the legs together and bring the height of the shelter back up. To impress the team inside the patrol base whenever we're building a stealth survival shelter, with the excess cordage from our ridge line, we're just going to hank that up and then put it somewhere where it won't be in the way and then we can get to it if we need it or when we take down the shelter, we have ease of access. With our overhead cover established with that bipod A-frame, all we have to do now, stake out the remaining two corners at the front of our shelter and then fine tune the rest of the shelter to get it as taut and strong as we need it to. And remember that debris that we swept from the area before we actually started digging? Well, now we're gonna take that debris, kick it back on top of the shelter to help add camouflage. Speaking of camouflage, now we can add some greenery to our shelter to help break up the outline and create that irregular shape as part of the Bliss Principle. Remember, we're always going to pull vegetation from behind our shelter because we expect people to come from the front and they're less likely to see broken branches that are behind us. We can add as much vegetation as we want, but we want the area to look natural. So we're just going to aim for trying to break up the straight lines of the sticks as well as the ridge line where our poncho is laying. But our shelter is relatively complete. Now we can get inside, test it out, and then take a look from a distance to see how that shelter blends into the environment and where we need to fine tune that shelter. Putting up the survival stealth shelter is about 80% of the problem. Taking it down and sterilizing or sanitizing the area is the other 20%. When we get ready to take this down, we just undo that quick deploy ridge line and take down the bipod legs, pull up all the stakes, keep the greenery because we can use that to help conceal the dig site later on with the ground debris. We're going to use that poncho, lift it up, and move all of the debris and any excess dirt to the rear of our shelter. Quickly pack up all the equipment in our rucksack or our salt bag, and then let's go back there to where we drug that 250 pounds of dirt in the poncho, and we're going to drag it right back to our shelter to one side so we can start adding dirt in the hole. To illustrate the point made earlier about using the entrenching tool to carve up the earth into tiny squares that we threw onto our poncho, now that we brought this back, we can take those squares back out and begin stacking them from head to foot of our shelter and all the excess dirt that we have, we can use to fill in the cracks. This is a great technique, super easy, and it's a lot less work the second time than it was the first time cutting out the earth, digging it, piling it, and dragging it off. 
Make sure to fill in all the cracks of the earth in between those cuts that we made as we piled the blocks back into the hole. Now we can use that ground debris that we swept up earlier from our shelter at the beginning of the dig, put it right back on top of the dig site, spread it out as evenly as possible, grab a couple of those green branches, put them down in the earth where our dig site was, and we're done. All right, guys, down and dirty video today. Stealth Survival Shelter, the Ranger Grave, a modification to a two-man fighting position taught to infantry forces for combat out in the jungle. I really hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.